Cops of Reddit, what is the most stupid criminal you have ever met? A little over a month ago, my apartment was broken into while my boyfriend was still inside. He works nights, so at midday he's still fast asleep and didn't notice this guy come in and rummage around until he throws the bedroom door open, panics at seeing my BF, and runs off. My BF looks around the apartment and finds that the laptops, tablets, etc. are still there. The intruder must have run off before getting to all that, but a handful of smaller valuables such as USBs, keys, and wallets were gone. He also did a fair amount of damage rummaging around and spray painting our walls. Also ate our biscuits. What was there, however, were the idiot's bags. He'd left his school rucksack containing some schoolwork, some of our possessions, his ID, some years old school papers with his parents' phone numbers on them, etc. So, already he's an idiot. We know who he is. The police are having a laugh with us a little later about it, and as one of them takes my BF statement, we hear a knock at the door. I go to answer it as a friend said he was coming over anyway, and I find the same guy from the ID outside my door. He looks at me, then at the police officer behind me, still holding the bags, and asks, Can I have my bags back, please? After a stunned moment, he's grabbed by the police officer, and my BF confirms that this is the guy. He's arrested on the spot. The police said it was the dumbest thing they'd ever seen, like something out of a sitcom. It made local news. So I get a call about a beer run, shoplifting, from the local CVS. I check the area and see two guys matching the description. I detain them, and sure enough, they had a couple of Coronas and some off-brand whiskey. I confirm with CVS that they were the suspects, the alcohol was their property, and they are desirous of prosecution. All is good, my state requires that I take them to the station to book into jail and get fingerprinted. Then they are issued a citation and released with a court date a couple of months out. While driving to the station, I ask what they were doing stealing the alcohol. One guy says that they are only 20, and since they were old enough to buy it, they just decided to steal it instead. No big deal, young people make stupid mistakes. I get to the jail, book them in, and start filling out the citation. The citation requires both birthday and age. I do the math on the birthday, and sure enough, the guy is 21, meaning he is old enough to buy alcohol. I go back into the jail and verify his birthday. Yup, same one he had listed on his driver's license. I redo the math out loud, 21 years old. I ask, how old are you again? He replies, 20, sir. I said, you turned 21 last month. Again, he is adamant, no, I turned 20. I just left it at that. TLDR, guy stole beer because he forgot his age and thought he wasn't old enough to buy it. Went to jail because of it. Not a cop, but I used to work at a smoke shop. Three guys broke in from a large window, leaving blood everywhere just trying to get in. They walked right past the high-end, fancy, expensive glass and proceeded to grab as many cheap Chinese bongs as possible. They went back through the window, breaking two or three bongs in the process of crawling through the tiny hole they made, probably cutting themselves even more than they already had, and hightailed it across the street. They seemed to have dropped damn near everything while running because there was literally a trail of broken glass leading to the apartment across the street. Cops came, followed the glass trail leading directly to someone's door. They looked over the low fence to their bottom floor balcony and saw three guys, all cut up, smoking from a broken bomb. We estimated they took eight or nine bombs, they were smoking from the only survivor. They turned out to be regulars. Never saw them again after that. Not a cop, but work corrections as a CO. Had a new inmate ask me if I could bring some drugs in for him. Laughed in his face, thinking he was joking. He wasn't, and had to inform him that just asking that question to a staff member could land him in the hole. He didn't see what the big deal was, he tells me he always asks the staff at every jail he lands in. Just shook my head, and thanked him for the job security. Which made two other inmates standing close by burst out laughing. There was a kid who sold drugs on my floor of a college dorm who wasn't the brightest. One night he was driving back to the dorm and a police car comes behind him and turns on the lights. His dumbass stored all of his drugs in his car and assumed they were pulling him over for possession. He proceeds to drive through a red light and pull into the dorm parking lot to hide. Mind you, his car was covered in bumper stickers, had a kayak rack, and a vanity plate to top it all off. The parking lot only had one entrance and exit too. Apparently he thought the police car wouldn't go through a red light to follow him. Long story short, they were just going to warn him for having a tail light out and nothing more. Instead, he ended up in the local jail and expelled from the college. The funniest part is that his ledger of all transactions and the dollar amounts, products, and buyers was also right there in his car. He was one stupid criminal. Not a cop or criminal, but we had a guy break into my high school with his buddy and smash a bunch of soda machines. 
We had cameras all over the school, but these guys were smart. They said, now nah, we're gonna cover up our faces so they don't know who did it, and then wore Letterman jackets with their names on the back. Went to a job of two males attempting to break into a car. Job description said they had been at it for at least an hour. Got there and the car was theirs. They had apparently locked themselves out. Checks confirmed it did belong to one of the person's mom. On their person was stolen mail and heaps of phones and new stuff in boxes in the car so they got arrested for theft anyway. Ended up that the driver's door they had been trying to break into was the only locked door out of the four. Was unlocked everywhere else the whole time they were there. I'm a 911 dispatcher in Florida. Sometimes confused or drunk people knock on the wrong door or try to get into a house thinking it's theirs, but it isn't. It's an honest mistake. But the whole owner is rightfully very afraid thinking they are about to be robbed or worse. Well I had this kid, must have been in his early 20s and clearly stone call me going absolutely crazy that someone is trying to kill him and take his property and rape his girlfriend blah blah blah. I send units code 3 to this guy thinking it's a burglary in progress. Turns out the guy ordered a pizza and forgot about it. Scared the delivery guy half to death. From the local newspaper. Two young men in a pickup truck on a back road stopped a courting Amish couple in a buggy and told the couple to give them all of their money. Spoiler, the Amish don't generally have money. They do have good memories, though, and told the cops the license plate number. The inept criminals were locals, too, and should have known better than to try and rob the Amish. My ex stole a car and went to pick up his friend at the police station in the stolen car. He parked right in front of a cop. The cop ran the plates and escorted him into the building. Next day, he was on the news as the most stupid criminal in town. Edit, a lot of people are asking me why I dated him. Well he never told me that. One day, I decided to Google his name and I found the article. Learn from me ladies and gentlemen, Google your partner's name. You never know what they are hiding. And yes, best thing I did was break up with him. Mistakes were made. I went to a domestic violence call where the woman claimed her husband hit her. When I asked her how it happened, she told me he couldn't provide the kind of life she wanted him to give her. She stated since he had a heart attack and got lupus he wasn't working so she decided she should start inviting some friends over to have sex with her for money. Mind you, she's telling me, a fully uniformed officer, all of this. She says he should act as the person who handles the money for her, i.e. her pimp. She then calls someone to come over, and tells her husband that after she gets paid for the sex he should hold the guy at knife point and take the rest of his money. She said he refused to help her with this so they got into an argument. He pushed past her to get out of the apartment. She claimed that was the assault she called me for. I asked her if she understood she just admitted to planning a felony crime. She looked shocked that planning a prostitution and robbery was wrong at all, and did not get why I wasn't arresting her husband for trying to remove himself from her stupid plan to get them both arrested. Edit, thanks for the silver this is my first one. For all of those asking if I arrested her, I did not. The husband is the real hero here. Due to him refusing to be involved in anything this plan of hers never made it off the ground. If the John had actually been invited over I could have arrested her for an offense. I did write a report and passed it along to the robbery and vice units, as well as notifying my supervisors. Best I could do that night was separating them. I drive the husband across town to remove him from the situation. The penal code in each state differs slightly on what charges are considered arrestable while still in the planning stages. This wasn't something I could arrest on, mainly due to not having a direct victim I could point to. Basically because this was a what-if scenario it would be the equivalent of me mumbling to myself I should punch that guy in the face. If the John had been invited over, and or I had gotten a name for the possible John the First could have arrested her for it. TL slash DR, being stupid and making stupid plans isn't a crime. Crimes require victims. Took a vehicle burglary report where the victim found a driver's license sitting on her driver's seat that the suspect must have left behind. Seems damning, but if he had any criminal smarts he would just say his license was stolen and the thief must have dropped it while breaking into this new victim's vehicle. Without any other evidence, the case would have gone nowhere. The next day I take a report at a church that was a couple of blocks away from the vehicle burglary. This guy stole the video cameras from the building. He must have thought the footage came with the camera, because when we checked the video, there was a high-def close-up of the suspect's face as he removed the camera. Good evidence, sure, but I still didn't know who the guy was, until I looked at the license I collected the day prior and saw it was the same exact guy. Not me but my buddy is a cop and told me about this one kid in particular he dealt with for years. No cleverness to him, numerous times he walked into his neighbor's garage in broad daylight and just stole his bike. Constantly stole from stores in plain view, even the occasional minor assault or burglary. He always got caught. Like had never gotten away with any of his hundreds of crimes, but because he was a minor there were never any real repercussions. 
A few days before he turned 18 my friend and another officer went to his house to basically remind him that if he does anything after that he will face real punishment as an adult and he'll get zero breaks. Like a last ditch effort to be helpful. Two days after his 18th birthday he's caught committing an armed robbery. Pretty sure he's doing a few decades behind bars. Can't go into too much detail, but kid, 14, shot another kid, 15, in the leg after a fight in their apartment complex. The victim is able to describe the gun the shooter used in detail. We get get shooter's name from another kid who knows him from school. My partner looks up his Instagram and would you believe it, there he is posing with the gun described to us exactly. Social media is a treasure trove of wannabe gangsters incriminating themselves. I went to school with a guy that was out on probation for something pretty serious, like he had years hanging over his head. He also made it very clear that he would rather die than go back to jail. He lasts like six months before he violates his probation by stealing something from a convenience store. The fucked up part is he had money to pay but chose to steal it anyway, it was seriously a small item like a candy bar. In the dark night they said that some men just want to watch the world burn, while some men just have a compulsion to break the rules. XLEO here. So I get a call a couple years ago to a lady who says she is being threatened. I respond to a very rural area and she shows me her cell phone and it is a chain mail text from an unknown number. The message showed a picture of a girl with a gag in her mouth and she is looking at the camera and holding a sign with both hands that said help. The text of the message stated she was in Amsterdam and she didn't forward the text to 10 people and look what happened to her. I explained to the lady that it was a hoax and explained what a chain mail message was. She refused to believe me and became argumentative. When I offered to contact Interpol for her she did not know what that was, that wasn't good enough, and just kept saying that girl needed help. I asked her if she knew the girl and she said no and she believed the girl tried to send her the message using any made up number she could instead of contacting anybody she knew. My reasoning was once again shot down, and she said again that the girl needed her help. I remember driving away and the lady screaming at me that I needed to help that girl. I responded with a single no over my P.A as I quickly sped away. Both of those women were never heard from again, now forward to 10 people. Not a cop, but worked at a 7-Eleven in a rough part of Chicago. Had two guys come in and ask for two bottles of Grey Goose. I asked for their IDs, they handed them over, and I grabbed the two bottles from behind the counter to ring them up. They proceeded to grab the bottles and book it out of there, leaving their IDs on the counter. I called the police, they came in asking for a description of the thieves, and I handed them the IDs. Cops were in disbelief at the stupidity, left and went to the address on one of the IDs that was about two blocks away. About 15 minutes later they walked in with the two guys and bottles of Grey Goose, poor guys didn't even have a chance to open them. I confirmed it was them, didn't press charges, took the bottles of Grey Goose back and went on with my overnight shift. I can imagine playing the best witness ever. Can I give a description officer? Well I can try I guess. The first one looked roughly 6 feet 11 inches, blonde hair with a hook nose and medium complexion. He had a small scar on his left cheek, blue eyes, high cheekbones and a gap between his front teeth. He looked approximately 25 years, 3 months and 24 days old. The second had dark skin, black hair, brown eyes with a missing front tooth, broad mouth and broken nose. He seemed around 22 years, 11 months and 12 days old. Now I can't be sure, but I think their names were Joe Jimmy Jameson, and the other was James Jim Bob Joson. Oh, and they left these behind. So I'm sitting in the station, doing paperwork. I'm looking out of the window, and a few yards away is a bus stop. A young lad is smashing the glass of the bus stop, as a way of showing off to a couple of girls. So I sigh, walk about 20 yards over to him and arrest him. Another time, a lad had just broken into a pharmacy and stolen some drugs. Sleeping tablets, which he started taking, maybe to hide the evidence, who knows how these people's minds work. There's a foot chase, which gets slower, and slower, and slower. I ended up just walking slowly behind him. The guy fell asleep while I was booking him in. Not a cop, but I've got a pretty good story. Once, when I went to the grocery store, there were a few officers inside, getting statements from some of the staff. Apparently some guy had dropped a gallon-sized Ziploc bag full of crack on the floor while he was walking out. Staff members noticed it right away and called the police, right before the guy comes back into the store, demanding that the staff return his crack. He was still arguing with and threatening them when the police walked in the door. Edit, in case I didn't make it clear at the beginning, this is second-hand knowledge and I saw none of this. I'm relaying what I was told. Ex-police officer here. I pulled over a dude for having a brake light out. Nothing serious, ran his plated and the likes. It all came back clean and nothing seemed off, until he exclaimed, I haven't had any alcohol. In an over-enthusiastic tone. 
For some reason he thought this was a good idea, so nearly got away with it. Vodka doesn't smell. I breathalyzed him. Legal limit in England is 35. He blew over 60. Arrested on the spot and his vehicle towed. Idiot. To clarify, I did not mean that vodka is odorless. What I meant by that comment was that compared to beer or wine or other alcohols, vodka has a very mild smell. Most drink drivers I pulled either smelt of a stronger smelling alcohol or had obvious side effects of the drink making it easy to see they were intoxicated. Hope this clarifies it a bit. My father is a police officer. He once told me a story of a call he went to for reports of a man and woman fighting in an apartment. Call came from neighbors for noise complaints slash concern. He was third shift, so this was at some point very late at night, when all the crazy people are up and at M. When he arrived he could hear the yelling through the door, he knocked and let them know it was the police. There was immediate silence and a man answered the door, completely naked. The naked man didn't even give my dad a chance to speak or ask questions, the first thing he said was I don't have a knife behind my back. Well, he definitely did have a knife behind his back. And the naked woman he was with had drugs, which was what they were fighting over. They both got arrested that night. Tip, don't do illegal drugs, and if you do, don't answer the door for the cops. I got a similar story. Background, I'm Swiss. We got mandatory military service duty. Whilst doing this, you usually get to keep your army rifle as personal rifle at home for the following years, and every year there's a repetition course for about three weeks until you're 30 or something. During that time, you keep your rifle at home. You're supposed to keep it locked away, but most people I know just toss it in a corner of the attic or put it below the bed or something. You don't get to keep any ammo though. Anyways, a friend was having a party at home. Some friends call him that they're gonna show up at his place soon. The door rings. As he's pretty drunk, he thinks it's a fun idea to take the rifle, not loaded slash without ammo, but still, and open the door with the rifle pointed at the door, to scare his friends. Unfortunately, it was not his friends, but the cops, called by a neighbor because noise disturbance. I don't know all the details, but he doesn't have an army rifle anymore. Still had to do the rest of his military service, but unarmed, which you can do without problem, depending on your function within the army. He probably also paid a fine. As a teacher, remember asking a student who was looking a bit out of it what was up. Sleepily, she replies didn't get much sleep. I asked her if everything fine, as you normally do. Yeah, it's okay. My uncle got arrested last night though. Low socio-economic area so it's not as unusual as you'd think. Anyway, she tells the story. Uncle so stupid. He and his mate thought it would be a good idea to steal a local ATM. He and his mate smashed through the windows, put chains around it and dragged it out with their big truck. They decided it worked well, so they ended up dragging all the way home. She gives a half smile, thing is, cops found them easy, just followed the marks on the road all the way to the front door. So yeah, worthy I feel. Quick edit to say, I'm Australian, gotten tired so excuse language can't think. This would have been 2008 or 2009 too. That actually scares me was so long ago. I knew this kid in high school who got pulled over for a minor traffic violation. He decides it would be funny to jump out of the car and book it down the street. The cops of course go chasing after him and after a couple of blocks he stops, puts his hands in the air, and yells, psych. The cops didn't find it funny so they tackled him to ground and put him under arrest. His parents were wealthy so he didn't get in that much trouble, but it was still so incredibly stupid. Not a cop, but my kid was on a soccer team and I got friendly with another dad who was a cop. One day, after practice, he was dying to tell us a story that happened the previous week. He and his partner visited an apartment complex, where there had been some robberies. The owners asked the police to come speak to the residents about security, and there were about 15 or 18 people in their meeting room. One middle-aged woman said, in a drunk slurred tone, Well, if I see somebody outside my house, I'm going to get my gun and shoot him. One officer asked, what kind of gun do you have? She reached into her purse and pulled out this great big revolver. Where did you get that? My boyfriend gave it to me. Have you ever shot that thing? She said, no. The cop asked, which apartments do you live in? She said, my building faces the grocery store. The lead cop said, ma'am, what's probably gonna happen is, since you haven't shot before, you're gonna shoot, but you're gonna miss and the gun's going to kick up and you're gonna shoot high. And, your bullet is gonna go across the street to the parking lot at the Safeway, and you're gonna hit somebody putting groceries in their car. She was shocked, and sat there with her mouth open. I didn't know that a bullet could go that far. Yes ma'am, a bullet from your gun can probably go a mile. Another guy spoke up. Yes ma'am and it will go through walls too. Everyone turned around to look at him. He continued, a couple of years ago, 
I was trying to kill myself, so I sat on the toilet, put a gun up to my head yes, and fired. Just as I did it, I put my head down and missed, but the bullet went through the wall. It scared the s asterisk 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 out of somebody next door taking a shower. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe the channel for more exciting stories. You have to get out of the matrix, so watch our other videos right now. Stop chilling on your couch just like that. Get on with it.